good morning. What a fantastic day. Hmm? It's not bad. Sun is shining, but still very, very cold, which is never pleasant, is it? <clears throat> so, today I will definitely do another comfort zone one. Uh, just paint some monster, I think. Um, I think I'll be doing something organic. Good morning, Kuru. How's it going? Right. Welcome, welcome, welcome. As always with comfort zones, you do something you love and then uh, it becomes like less, less of a problem. Hey, Oliver, Oliver, or Babu, two twenty. Hey, good morning. So glad to see some uh, new regulars. Orbi, good morning, good morning, good morning. All right, let's do this. Time's running. Time to do some comfort zone painting. Uh, yet to know what it what it is I'm going to paint. I'm going to be again um, experimenting probably a little bit with a technique I used to do. Uh, the technique I used to do was uh, doing lots of lines like this and then um, kind of see what comes out and uh, <clears throat> you know to just kind of start uh, playing with the um, imagination of the like uh, what's it called reduction based thinking like uh, by by allowing your brain to get little bit of information at a time you can start kind of constructing a, an idea uh, we're definitely going to be doing some sort of monster head you know comfort zone why not? And probably try to be a little bit artsy with it. I don't know what, what that entails, but I felt like I should it should be added for some reason. Hey good morning, I'm here, Captain Jetlag. Ah, oh, hot coffee. Eric Mui Svenzenart. Uh Kuru. Cold and warm colors. Hmm. It is um those waters are deep. <laughs> There's lots of, of, of things to be uh, um, thought of. I think color theory is one of the trickiest things, I think, uh, for me at least. Um, mostly because I haven't studied it so much. I've, I've done a lot of like on, uh, surface skimming in, you know, when it comes to the information and a lot of things to, to go on emotion uh, but um, the whole like super technical aspect of it like some some painters know exactly which exact hue at what temperature and so on uh, I'm not that kind of guy I should really though um, but a lot of it goes on on emotion you know the, or the colors or reactive like the colors should be different uh, you know like in this Imaginary place. But the more you know, the better you are. And, uh, and I'm definitely trying to, to study colors as well to get better at it, to just up the game, you know. Hey, good morning, Atsuki. No VR, thanks for the host. Master 777 Oz, thanks for the host. Um, Kuru, yeah, it does look like a flower, and I think that's pretty cool. But it's not going to be a flower in the end. <clears throat> it's going to be a monster in the end. But uh, let's—I'm uh, just going to be uh, experimenting with stuff here. Kind of, I kind of know where I want to go with uh, this this monster. Um, So we'll see. 
Good morning, Luri. Timich Lava, thanks for the host. Nefas, welcome once again. You join us for your wonderful emojis. Okay. So now I feel I need to define the light a little bit. Should I? Yes, I should. Why not? Uh, okay. Separate that a bit. Yeah, I think uh, uh, what I, what I love about sketching, I think, is the is the is this kind of this lovely freedom of just creating. And I love sketching in sketchbooks and um, on the computer. But what's I think what 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 ruins sketching for me is this um, when the sketch has to have a purpose. Like for me, the sketching aspect is it, like the joy of sketching is lost then. Like when you have to. Uh, stick within parameters uh, in your sketch um, I mean obviously for work etc that is that is vital that you can sketch towards a goal but uh, just kind of free free sketching I think one of the biggest joys I get out of sketching um, kind of free form is, is this randomness you know just have the time set aside to to sketch and then then just see what comes out. I think that that is one of the, the biggest joys, I'd say, of uh, sketching is this kind of <laughs> almost watching a TV show. Sense and art, yeah, I think that is a that is a good thing to do, um, because with traditional, you really got to think, uh, you know, plan ahead. I think it's really useful to uh, to do that. Um, I should as well, really. Um, I've kind of had plans of starting to to paint again. Um, but the problem is just time. I don't have the, at the moment, um, with my kids, they are kind of limiting my ability to just spend time with myself, you know, while they are around. Um, kids demand lots of attention, obviously. They want, they want love and attention from their, their parents. So that is what you know you got to give them but also my daughter has uh, certain special needs so that uh, is in increases the like the limit of just sitting being around your children but being able to spend time f on your own stuff um, while enjoying each other's company uh, which is you know it's a, it, it's a bit of a, a shame really when you think about it uh, in that way, not not against my daughter, but just the situation, you know. Obviously, I, why, I, who wants their children to have need to have special needs? Hey, Jordi, good morning. Uh, Kuro, yeah, I think that is a, a really uh, common thing a lot of people do that they, they think they need to be serious with their sketches uh, like impress and and I think I think that ruins a lot of the fun of sketching and that that's something I have deliberately not wanted to do with with my sketchbooks so if you look at my sketchbooks they are very random and they are very exploratory and there's lots of mistakes everywhere and you know I don't care it's just I love the action of sketching more than having a pretty drawing Obviously, if someone looks in your sketchbook, you want to have nice things in there so they understand that, oh, you're actually good. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
but you know it's um it's a tricky one right how do you go about that hey bubble 220 I, I use a lot of uh, my own brushes, but uh, I also collect brushes from other brush packs, and um, especially those that sync uh, with my my way of painting. I, I a lot of brushes I make myself when I feel that there isn't a brush that does it, and uh, if I when I download some brush packs and and try them, and the brush does better than my old version. I tend to remove my own and use the the better one. And uh, now now and then, like what at least once a year, I update my brush pack with new brushes uh, to to kind of force me to in a way to uh, try new brushes. Uh, obviously, for work, I keep the ones that I I know and, and trust to in to to be able to you know not have to relearn the brushes because. Like I talked to one of the guys at the studio, and, and we were talking about brushes. I t briefly talked about this on another stream. Like the the brushes you use is like your weapon of choice, right? You really gotta learn the behavior of the brush, so that the brush itself doesn't become uh, an obstacle in in being able able to create. If you think about anything you know like your running shoes or 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 you know chair or clothes if you change clothes it you instantly feel the difference and you're aware of it and uh, you know all these things the same thing for brushes the more you try new ones and experiment with with just brushes the more you have to re relearn and I think the the more successful brushes that when you try a new one is the one that that kind of keys into your already existing behavior in like how you treat brushes, uh, which is uh, you know that in itself is an interesting point in um, doing studies. <laughs> Study your brushes. Um, yeah, definitely, I mean, um, with a goal, it, it's uh, definitely more aimed sketching. You know, you know a lot better at what, what you're going to try to do, and you can focus your intent more. But that doesn't necessarily mean it's fun. You know, For me, fun is just sketching something and then getting an idea and then drawing it. A lot of times, yes, you know, sketching from a brief or direction is fun as well but that for me is more work you know like work related like okay what's the challenge what what's the purpose of this sketch right so that you like okay this person wants to see this okay how can i make it my own to fulfill their brief like if i would be the art director maybe i i wouldn't do that and that you know It gives you that impression that you know maybe it's just work. Sense an art, yeah. I mean, just because there is an opportunity to use brushes, I don't think that necessarily means you have to use brushes. Uh, or, or use as many as you can. I mean, most of the times that's counterproductive. Like, um, if you just kind of go crush, brush crazy. Uh, brush crazy. I hope I said that because in my ma mind I said crush crazy. And that's obviously not <laughs> the correct word. Uh, yeah, brushes are. They're tricky. Not the easiest thing to 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 master. And I think with just using two three brushes, you get a lots of versatility there, and combinations and processes. And the more you use them, the more you can kind of try things out. Let's see. Did, did. 
should be something there. Something there. Hey, Decan Princess. Welcome back. <laughs> Morning Star is probably the best brush. Morning Star, do you mean the medieval weapon? Or am I am I am I missing the, the joke here? <laughs> yeah, Kuro. I mean using brushes it depends. It depends really. Like the complexity and and um, how much you paint and how fast you need to do it. Um, you know, brushes is a good thing if you need to you know, like if you have photo brushes. Uh, you need to get something down fast, take shortcuts, you know. The dick brush. Did you see? Um, maybe you guys were not around, but uh, the art director for Master Black made um, a texture brush with his. Uh, he scanned. He scanned his balls, and used the balls as a <laughs> like a brush, texture brush. Posted it on the concept art many years ago. Quite funny, and uh, was it Dave Repose that did that did the dick dick brush? If I'm not mistaken. I remember that uh, big portrait. Probably is going to be. Is there um, audio bots that listen in on on topics? Maybe they're not going to be happy with all the the penis talk. Going to flag it as inappropriate. Yeah, Kuro, I have a baby brush. <laughs> Amir, yeah. Very artsy. Using your balls as a brush. Uh, I am... Um, my first son, when my when we did the uh, ultrasound uh, at the doctors, for, you know, to check the sex of the baby, um, I scanned the, the photo of the ultrasound where you see him in the stomach and I made a brush and I, for I think one, two years, uh, at least the first year, uh, I used it, that brush for every single painting I did uh, that year. As like the beginning of, a, of a, any painting, I used that brush to, to sketch with, which is, was also my, like, my, my honor for my son. Captain Jetlag, yeah, the art director for Master Black, he uh, he scanned his balls for a texture brush. You know, I like those kind of little things, like you, <laughs> not the balls, but using, like, say, the the ultrasound for my baby uh, as a brush. You know, it's my brush. No one cares about it. They don't even know when. Probably, if they see the brush or use the brush, uh, they won't get it. Unless it's you know they they really investigate and and things like that, but for me it's a, like a little cool little thing of knowing that all right that's my boy 
uh, he's been a part of every painting that year. Okay, so we're 10 minutes, hello, 12 minutes left. This is definitely lots of repaint compared to yesterday. Definitely a lot more, more uh, exploratory. Kind of see what what's happening here. It's fun though. I I, I kind of dig the start. I like where this uh, monster head is going, but it you don't know really what it is at the moment. Um, and I think the only way to make it someone understand what's happening here is a uh, focal point, which is lacking. Let's put some teeth in. And um, also want to put in some colors. Oh, what's happening with my ears? Ah, I hate it when it starts. they start to ring. You know, make a tone. <laughs> Happens now and then. Okay. Mm. Not super happy, but what can you do? Uh, I want to do a color lookup. Not happy with the colors, just because they're they're not very interesting to look at. So I'll just kind of force them into some space, and then uh, start playing around with it. Oliver, or yeah, the baby brush was a bit crazy. Kuro, yeah, and I would definitely be cool. Um, and I think also more more of a actual focal point, you know, of, of this sh kind of shape madness. The idea of, of like what I was trying to pursue is like a multi-mouth creature that it has layers um, of mouths that it can open. And by the way, I want to say um, it's a little bit now a couple of days ago, but uh, thank you very much for all the wonderful birthday wishes. It was, it was a very nice. Thank you for all the love. Felt good. Good in my old, old heart. <laughs> no, but all seriously, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. I appreciate you. <laughs> Isn't that such a like self-help uh, psychology comment? I appreciate you. You mean a lot. <laughs> no, but uh, you know, seriously, thanks. Yeah, it would definitely be cool on a normal torso. The idea here, right, is that the shoulder is up where I'm painting now, on the corner there, so that he's kind of leaning in. Uh, I need to communicate that better by just kind of highlighting the corner over here. Um, and then um, some eyes, definitely some eyes. But I don't want to give him human eye. I don't want to give him... Maybe just one eye. Hmm. 
Will that make it silly? Makes it definitely look silly. Can't have it there. Doesn't make sense. Three eyes. Two eyes. Four eyes. Let's do four eyes. Paint a bit faster, I think. Okay, let's um, put some harder highlights. Ah, those eyes are stupid. The mouth is stupid as well. But it's okay. It's okay. Let's let's just roll with it and see um see see where it'll take me with on my last five minutes. It is what it is. Too late now. I mean I could still delete the eyes when they're on a separate layer. Let's just maybe keep it like that. Maybe the eyes are too big, it makes it look silly. Let's change that up a bit. Holes on the sides kind of look like eyes. Don't this? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Bipolar. <laughs> All of that are not probably not the ball sack. I hate those eyes. Let's remove them. For me, like I've noticed. Like, a lot of times, the eyes are always the same on monsters. Is it because the eyes just can't vary that much? You know, what does a monster's eye look like? I mean, obviously, there is no monsters. Obviously, they have to listen to some sort of laws of, uh, of existence where eyes go. But, I mean, I think... A lot of the most like memorable monsters, they've always had some kind of good take on eyes, or lack thereof. I mean, Alien. Alien, more or less, is just using echolocation and some sort of hormone sniffing, right? Looks through that dome of it that it has. But doesn't have eyes, right? It just have that weird, weird ass dome. Yeah, where you can't see the eyes. Obviously, there is a, there is this kind of uncertainty about it. Like, why can't I see the eyes? That makes me very uncomfortable. But it's a, it's a tricky one. Eyes for me is a, is like you search the eyes a lot in the painting, and then when you find it, you become happy. 
like, ah, yes, those are the eyes that needs to go there. And so far, I'm very unhappy with the eyes. Wanna Just play a little bit more with the light. Kuru, yeah, definitely. No eyes, there's no like uh, soul or person in there, right? So, because humans look at eyes a lot, and if there is none, we become like, oh, why isn't there eyes? And also like emotions. If there's an emotionless face, it also gives a certain flavor to it, right? And this guy has a stupid face. <laughs> Look at that silly mouth. That's fine. Good exploration, I'd say. It, it reminds me somehow of like a Venus flight trap with this kind of ongoing mouth. Like, uh, I think it was Kuru who said it looks like a flower, which is true, which I think is a kind of a cool part of this, this sketch that is a flower monster, or at least keys into that, right? Makes it different. I mean, with this like sketch, you could easily start sketching new monsters based on that idea uh, and explore, you know, start building a world around this kind of rule set of, of what they should look like. Multi-mouthed monsters act like flowers. The mouths like Venus flytraps. That could be cool. All right, uh, time's up. Very random stream today, very random topic, I feel. The topic wasn't really, uh, as in conversation topic, wasn't really um, harnessed. It was a little bit all over the place, uh, just like the sketch. Uh, but nonetheless, it was good fun. I enjoyed sketching, even though I extremely disliked the the eyes on the monster. But what can you do? It is what it is. Tomorrow is a new day. New opportunity to sketch some comfort zone stuff. Uh, I'm digging it. Uh, I'm happy doing comfort zone things uh, until I'm going to get bored. Uh, then uh, let's go back to topics. But for the time being, I'm having fun. I'm having fun doing these comfort zone monsters and uh, paintings and whatnot. First time saving. Great. Bananas. <laughs> All right. Thanks everyone for coming. Have a fantastic day. Uh, good evening. Um, see you guys on Discord. Discord link is underneath if you want to go hang out. My brushes is on the Discord if anyone want to try them in the useful links channel. Uh, see you tomorrow morning. Same time. Same place. Have a good one. Here comes the outro. Sad face.